One of the strangest doctrines in the Bible is the doctrine of the unpardonable sin. And you'll read about this in the 12th chapter of Matthew, beginning at verse 31. Jesus said that all manner of sin and blasphemy that men blaspheme shall be forgiven them except the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And tonight, let's see what the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is. Now, many people make the mistake of thinking the unpardonable sin is something you do. But Christ said the unpardonable sin is something you say. Something you say. It's not blasphemy of an institution or an organization. That isn't it. It's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And he said that uh, whoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world nor in the world to come. What is the unpardonable sin? Well, I'm not sure. I've heard preachers say that it refers to uh, attributing to the devil the work of the Holy Spirit. But a man can do that accidentally. I've heard men say it's the final rejection of Christ or telling God to leave you. But Job asked God to depart from him, yet still he got right with God in the end. What is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? I don't know. But I know one thing. Tonight, I'm going to draw you a picture of a man that committed the unpardonable sin. And then you can make up your mind what it is. Now, here's the Lord Jesus Christ up in the clouds. He died for your sins, was buried. The third day, he rose again from the dead, according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Down here is a little boy. He comes into the world, pink cheek, rosy face. What could be cuter than a little baby boy? A little baby boy. Who would ever guess to think, at a little baby boy, that he might grow up to cut a woman's body into four parts and stuff it into a trunk? But some men grow up that way. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't explain how some people grow up unless you believe in a personal devil. A man said one time, he said, I don't believe in a personal devil. I think that the devil is just the principle of evil. An old sister said, and God bless her heart, she said, Mister, if there ain't no devil, she said, I'd sure like to know who does all his work. And that's so. You can't explain how a baby can start out the way babies start out and wind up the way some men wind up unless there's a personal devil. Adam and Eve had a perfect environment, but they fell. And you could have a perfect environment and a perfect heredity and still grow up lost, ruined, wrecked, damned, in despair, miserable, and lost. Yes, a man can start out as a little pink-faced, rosy-cheeked boy, the pride and joy of his mother's heart, and wind up drunken in his own vomit in the gutters of Honolulu. I've seen them. Why, once upon a time, Judas was just a baby. His mother probably rocked him to sleep and sang, rock a baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come rock a baby and all. You can't explain it. Now, one day, this little boy hears Jesus knocking at the door of his heart. And he says, is that you, Jesus? And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him, and he with me. Can I come in? And the boy said, well, I'm just not old enough yet. You say, how old does a boy have to be before he's old enough to be saved? Well, certainly not 12. Superstitious people that have studied Schweitzer and Schleiermacher and know about the God consciousness of Christ, they believe a child has to be 12 years old before he's old enough to be saved. But that's sheer nonsense. There's not one statement in the Bible that says a boy has to be 12. Christ said, I come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And when a boy or girl is old enough to know they're a sinner, they're old enough to be saved. One time I talked to a mother about her soul. And after I finished talking to her, I said, can I speak to your little boy about his soul? She said, my boy's not 12 years old yet. I said, well, all he has to do is be old enough to know he's a sinner. And she said, what, my little boy a sinner? She said, my little boy's not a sinner. And I turned up to the boy, I said, little boy, I said, are you a sinner? And he said, you don't know what they know. You'd be surprised what they know. You'd be surprised how old a child uh, is before he knows about sin. And you'd be surprised how young some of them are before they know about sin. Now, Deuteronomy 139 says God won't hold them accountable if they don't know the difference between good and evil, but if they know, then they're old enough to be saved. Well, time goes on, and the years roll by, and one day this boy hears a knock at the door of his heart, and Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Well, the boy says, I've joined the church and I've been baptized, 
And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me in. Well, the boy says, I'm going over. I'm just not quite old enough yet. And time goes by and goes on and on. You see, he's getting a little older. And one day he hears a knock at the door of his heart. And he says, is that you again, Jesus? And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. How about it? Well, he said, Jesus, I'm, ha I'm having a pretty good time. I've got me a hot rod. I'm out dating at night and juking a little bit. And I've got me a girlfriend. And I'm going to get saved one of these days, but I'm just not quite ready yet. <laughs> and Jesus said, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of this world is the enemy of God. Well, the boy says, I know you're right, Jesus, but I'm just going to wait a little longer. So he waits a little longer, and time goes by. He's getting older and older. One day he has knocked the door of his heart, and he says, Is that you again, Jesus? And Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him, and he with me. How about it? Well, he says, Jesus, I've been to college now, and I've studied the evolutionary theory, and I know about nuclear physics, and I know how to do quadratic equations and get the cube root out of a number, and I've studied organic chemistry, and I don't believe the Bible anymore. I'm an educated man. And Jesus said, he that believeth not should be damned. Well, he said, I don't even believe that. You're just quoting scripture. And Jesus said, he that believeth not should be damned. Well, he said, that's just a spurious passage. I don't even believe the Bible. And Jesus said, he that believeth not should be damned. Well, he said, Jesus, I know you're right. I'm just trying to show off. I know you're right, and, and I'm just trying to instruct my education. I know I'm lost, and I know I need to get saved. And I'm going to get saved someday, but I'm just not quite ready yet. <laughs> and Jesus said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. And time goes by. Look at those lines in his face. You know he isn't getting any younger. You know you're not getting any younger. You're not any younger than you were 10 years ago. The surest fact that you're a sinner is the fact that time leaves lines in your face. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And if the wages of sin is death, then death begins to mark your face. I know you're a sinner because I can see it on your face. You're a marked man. People are so gullible, they're so naive, especially society people. They try to make up and look like something they've seen in a magazine, but their face tells the story. It's the story of sin. Now, I'm an artist. I draw faces. I could paint for you two faces tonight, the same size, same proportion, and the same dimensions, and by putting one set of lines in one face and another set of lines in the other face, I could produce for you a picture of a saint and a picture of a demon. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. And if it doesn't find you out anywhere else, it'll most certainly find you out in your face. People are so silly, especially unsaved people. They think they're getting by with something. Why, it's all over the face. <laughs> Did you ever see a drunkard that needed a sign on his face saying, look at me, I'm a drunk? Why, it's written all over him. You see that nose like a light bulb? <laughs> And those bags under those bags under those bags under his eyes, that's a drunk man. <laughs> do you think any fallen woman, do you think she needs a placard across her saying, look at me, I've sacrificed my purity on the altar of a young man's lust? Do you think she needs it? Do you think everybody in town doesn't know about it? Well, the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Find you out nowhere else. It'll find you out on your face. I've looked across many a congregation in my revival meetings up and down America, and I've seen girls 14 and 15 years old who in the face look like they've been married and divorced a half a dozen times. Hide sin? You can't hide sin. Just like a boy can't hide strawberry jam after he's been in a jam jar in the pantry. Well, time goes on. And one day this man hears a knock at the door of his heart and he says, is that you again, Jesus? And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. How about it? Well, he says, Jesus, I'm going to get saved yet, but I, pretty soon, but I just don't feel like I can live it yet. And when I get so I can live it, I'm going to get saved. And Jesus said, without me, without me, you can do nothing. Well, he says, I know you're right. I know you're right, Jesus, and I'm going to get saved someday, but I'm just not quite ready yet. And one day when this fellow wakes up, the Spirit of God isn't dealing with him like it used to. There's just a feeble knock at the door of his heart. And Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Well, the fellow says, Jesus, I, I've done something terrible. I've committed a terrible sin. I, I never thought I'd ever live to do this. I'm ashamed of myself. I don't know what to do. I, I've done something awful. I hardly even know how to tell you about it. I, 
I don't believe I, I can be saved. I'm afraid I've committed the unpardonable sin. What am I going to do? And Jesus said, Come now, saith the Lord. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. How about it? Fellas, it's all right, Jesus, I'm going to get saved. I've got my mind made up. I'm going to get saved. <laughs> but not tonight. And time goes on, and time goes on. And the brother gets saved. Knock at the door of his heart, and he says, Is that you again, Jesus? And Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come to the door. How about it? Lord, Jesus, I'm going to get saved. I've lost all my faith in God. I'm sick and tired of my life. I, I get so tired of batting my brains out sometimes. I feel like I'd just like to lie down and take a shotgun and blow my brains out. And Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. How about it? Fellas, it's all right. I'm going to get saved. I have my mind made up. I'm going to get saved tomorrow night. But tomorrow night never came. Tomorrow night never came. And one day that old sinner woke up alone in the world without hope and without God. And you ask me tonight, you say, what is the unpardonable sin? I'll answer you. I don't know what the unpardonable sin is. I don't profess to know. But I know one thing. I know you're looking here at a man that committed it. An old song says, there's a line that is drawn by rejecting the Lord where the call of his spirit is lost. And you hurry along with a pleasure-mad throng. But have you counted? Have you counted the cause? While the door of his mercy is open to you, ere the depths of his love you exhaust, won't you come and be healed? Won't you whisper, I yield? I have counted, I have counted the cause. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I'm drawing you here to the picture of a man that all his life wanted to be saved, intended to be saved, tried to be saved, but he died without God. And the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Behold, now is the accepted time now is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.